from the moment early humans first picked up stones to shape spheres, we have been tool makers. Not just to the physical sense, but cognitive. We invent, adapt, and externalize knowledge. The earliest cave paintings were memory aids and sundials told us when to plant and harvest. Over time, the abacus evolved into the calculator and the oral story became the printed book. Each innovation carried with it a silent question. If the tool does the thinking, what happens to the thinker? This pattern of tool-assisted learning is not new. What is new, however, is the proximity and power of the latest tool, artificial intelligence. Unlike any tool before it, AI doesn't just extend our capabilities, it can perform them in our place. And that shift, subtle at first, may be reprogramming the most fundamental human trait we possess, the way we learn. Historically, learning has always been tied to effort. Whether chiseling multiplication tables into clay in Mesopotamia or spending years apprenticing under a master, the human brain was shaped by struggle. Modern neuroscience confirms this. The act of wrestling with information, not just receiving it, is what builds durable neural pathways. This is where AI presents a dilemma. When students ask ChatGPT to explain a math problem, they may receive a correct answer, even an elegant one. But without the mental effort of grappling with the problem themselves, studies show that long-term retention drops significantly. This is a phenomenon cognitive scientists call cognitive offloading, when we rely on external aids instead of internal memory. The concern isn't that we use tools, it's that we may stop learning how to learn, the very skill that separates us from other species. So what does neuroscience tell us? The human brain is built to adapt. Thanks to neuroplasticity, every time we learn something new, our brain rewires itself. Functional MRI and PET scans show that different types of tasks, whether solving equations, composing music, or learning a language, activate unique but overlapping networks of brain regions. One crucial aspect is executive function, our ability to plan, focus, remember instructions, and juggle multiple tasks. These capabilities are strengthened when we engage in activities that are difficult, unfamiliar, and mentally demanding. The more diverse and integrated the brain activity, the more resilient and interconnected our cognitive networks become. AI, for all its strengths, tends to eliminate that struggle. It offers results without process, which means fewer opportunities for the brain to grow. Let's look at music. Music may be the most cognitively demanding activity humans engage in. Functional brain scans of musicians show simultaneous activation in the visual, auditory, and motor cortices, as well as the corpus callosum, the bundle of nerves that links the brain's two hemispheres. Unlike passive listening, playing music requires fine motor coordination, emotional interpretation, auditory discrimination, and memory recall, all at once. This integrated workout strengthens executive function, emotional intelligence, and even memory tagging, where each memory is stored with emotional, contextual, and sensory cues. But now imagine skipping all that. Just give AI a prompt and it composes a melody, sings it, mixes it, even masters it. In fact, we tried it. On Suno AI, we gave it the prompt, make a song about a penguin, relaxing on the beach in an upbeat reggae style. Within seconds, we had a fully produced track. Listen to this. Penguin on the sand, no plan, no demand. Life is sweet, no frost on the land. Penguin on the sand, just vibes in the sand. No hurry, no flurry, just love so grand. And the penguin on the sand, no plan, no demand. Impressive, right? After just one prompt, it created a fully produced song. This raises the question, if AI can make music this easily and the economics of the music industry make it harder to earn a living, will people still dedicate years to learning an instrument? More importantly, will we still want to? A recent MIT preprint tackled this head on, asking, does using AI to help with creative and educational tasks reduce cognitive engagement? They split participants into three groups. The first group used just their brains to write an essay without external tools. The second could use search engines like Google or similar, but no AI. And the third was the LLM group, which used ChatGPT exclusively. Each group wrote essays across multiple sessions. In a fourth session, the tools flipped. The LLM users had to use just their brain and vice versa. 
EEG scans measured brain activity. Essays were scored by real teachers and an AI judge, and participants were interviewed. The results, brain activity was highest in the group that didn't use any external tool, lower in the group that could use the internet, and it was the lowest in the LLM group, the group that used AI. LLM heavy users reported weaker ownership of their work and struggled to quote from essays they had written just minutes earlier because they hadn't generated the content themselves. When LLM users were forced to use only their heads, their performance dipped compared to participants who didn't use AI, suggesting that early over-reliance might short-circuit skill development. But the researchers were careful. The study only tested essay writing in an educational setting, not all tasks. It had a small, geographically limited sample. And the prompts were open-ended opinion essays, not fact-heavy research or technical problem solving, so results may not generalize. And most importantly, they warned against sensational headlines claiming, AI makes you dumb. The takeaway wasn't that you should never use AI. It was that how you use it matters. Use it after you've done the thinking, not instead of thinking. It showed that the way we approach learning can shape our brains. And the same is true for skills like learning a second language. Bilingualism offers a compelling example of how deep learning reshapes the brain. Research shows that people who speak more than one language have increased gray matter density, particularly in areas responsible for attention, memory, and task switching. Their dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, crucial for decision-making and self-regulation, becomes measurably more active. Contrary to outdated beliefs, bilingualism does not confuse the brain. It strengthens it. Even adult learners, though past the critical period of language acquisition, can benefit. Studies suggest they develop more rational decision-making skills in their second language, perhaps because emotional biases are tied more closely to their native tongue. If AI provides perfect translations and real-time transcription, will the incentive to learn a second language fade? And if so, are we trading away the neural advantages that multilingualism offers? If that's true for language learning, it feeds into a bigger debate. Is AI helping us grow or making our skills weaker over time? There are two main perspectives in this debate. The optimist view. AI, like every tool before it, will liberate human potential. Just as calculators didn't ruin math, AI won't ruin thinking. It will refocus it. We'll outsource menial tasks and reserve our minds for creativity, ethics, and big picture reasoning. The cautionary view. While tools have always changed us, AI's reach is broader and its feedback loop faster. The concern isn't just what we use it for, but when we start using it and whether it's replacing effort before mastery has taken root. Both views can be right. It's a matter of how we wield the tool. We are not born with knowledge. We shape it piece by piece through struggle, failure, and persistence. The human brain, unlike any algorithm, changes through this process. It grows. AI is not making us dumb. But if we stop engaging with the world, stop struggling, wondering, solving, and creating, then we may make ourselves less cognitively alive, one convenience at a time. The real question isn't whether AI is making us dumber. It's whether we still value what it means to be smart. Want more videos like this? Subscribe to MacHard for weekly AI updates and leave your thoughts in the comments below.